would like to call this uh, hearing to order at 5.34 p.m. Roll call. Roberto Zamora, present. Espio Chua, present. J.J. Luna, present. Aldo Benavides, present. Dr. Sainz, I declare a quorum. Thank you. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any public comments? We have no public comments. The purpose of this uh, hearing is to discuss La Jolla Independent School District's 2022 tax rate. Mr. Ben Garza, Executive, I mean, Assistant Superintendent or Chief uh, Financial Officer, is going to lead us in this presentation. Welcome, Mr. Garza. Thank you. Uh, board members, uh, good evening, Madam President, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Science, and community members. Uh, in front of you, you all have a package in red. It's going to be the uh, presentation that I'm showing on the screen right now. This is a public meeting on the proposed 2022-2023 tax rate. There are some variables impacting the proposed tax rate. As previously presented during the budget process, the calculated tax revenues during the budget process included the use of disaster pennies. The disaster that occurred was the winter storm Uri in 2020-2021. Excuse me. The Hidalgo County Appraisal District certified the property values on July 25, 2022. The district in turn submit, submits these values to TEA. Then in August, TEA issues the maximum compressed rate based on these certified values. Part of the requirements to adopt the tax rate is to have a public hearing, which we're doing here today. We have to advertise the proposed tax rate in the newspaper, which we did in the monitor on June 10th and 11th. The tax collector must certify the estimated collection rate. He did that at 100%. I think we had that on the board meeting on July 27th. It was approved. And the proposed tax rate is as follows. For MNO, maintenance and operations, it's 0.9746. For INS, it's at 0.2954 for a total tax rate of $1.27. The maintenance, um, the, excuse me, the MNO rate is set in accordance with the tax code section 26.08A-1. What that basically means is, um, when a disaster is declared, the district can adopt a higher tax rate and not have a voter election. So if I'll read it to you. It says, when increased expenditures of money by a school district is necessary to respond to a disaster, including a tornado, hurricane, flood, wildlife, or other calamity, but not include a drought that has impacted a school district, and the governor has requested federal disaster assistance for the area, in which the school district is located, an election is not required under this section to approve the tax rate adopted by the governing body for the year following the year in which the disaster occurs. It goes on to read, a tax rate, uh, just keep in mind, a tax rate ad adopted under this subsection applies only in the year for the, which the rate is adopted. If a district adopts a tax rate under this subsection, the amount by which the rate exceeds the district's voter approved tax rate for that tax year may not be considered when calculating the district's voter approval tax rate for the tax year following the year in which the district adopts the rate. On February 12th, the governor issued a proclamation issuing a disaster declaration and the legislature has allowed school districts to adopt a higher MNO tax rate in the year following a disaster without needing a tax rollback election or a TRE. And there's the, state, the declaration by the Governor Abbott that he issued. Um, and here is our opinion from our uh, attorneys 
that uh, they're formal, they uh, formed an opinion on the consideration of, it, uh, of the disaster tax rate. They agreed with us. The change in net taxable values per certified property values. In 2021, the grand total net taxable certified value was $3,167,537,236. In 2022, the grand total net taxable certified value was $3,355,581,616. Excuse me, three billion three hundred fifty-five million five hundred eighty-one thousand six hundred sixteen dollars. That was an increase of 5.94 percent. TEA surveyed the result with the result with a maximum compressed rate of uh, 0.8046 cents. So we met the, the maximum compressed rate of 80.46 80 cents. On the next slide, we have uh, a comparison of what was previously, previously presented for the budgeted revenues compared to the updated information we have now. For budget plan purposes, we were anticipating a 7.08% growth in property values, yet the growth came in at 5.94%. This, de this decrease resulted in a reduction in our tax collection revenues of $337,667 in M&O and $102,346 in INS. Because less taxes will be generated, there is an increase in state revenues. In this case, on the MO side, state revenues increased by $915,502. And on the INS side, $192,540, resulting in a net increase in revenues combined of $770,376. On this slide, this is a tax rate comparison. In 2020, 2021, the total tax rate was at 1.311. In 21, 22, the tax rate decreased by 0.0448 cents, or 4.48 4 pennies. In 22, 23, the change in tax rate is 0.0038, or 38 thousandths of a penny. This is equivalent to $3.80 per $100,000 of property value. And that concludes my presentation. Members of the community, do we have any questions? Members of the board, are there any comments? So the changes were done based on the disaster. The, I'm sorry, what was your, how, can you Said repeat that? The changes were based on tax code section that you presented at the beginning? The tax code section allowed us to use, make use of the disaster pennies. So we were able to uh, use 3.17 cents more. Any other questions? If there are no other questions, uh, this hearing is adjourned at 543. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have, no, we're, we're not gonna, we're gonna be approving it during the meeting. So Correct. this is just the presentation. So thank you, Mr. Garza. And again, if there are no other questions, this hearing is adjourned at 543.